My father was a Baptist minister, and he was invited, and this was in Texas, he was invited to speak at the Methodist Church one Sunday, and it was a very hot Sunday in the summer. All the windows were up, but there, were no, there was no air conditioning. And he was grateful for the pitcher of water as he continued to preach and continued to drink from it until it was empty. At the end of the sermon, the Methodist preacher came up and said, well, we want to thank Brother Heron for his wonderful message. And we were going to perform a baptism, but he's drunk all the water. <laughs> thank you, Chard, for having me. Um, thank you, Drew, for helping to set up this wonderful festival, Sundog, um, Yankee Books, everyone who has worked so hard to bring it together. Thank you. Um, the bookstore was able to get my first book, which is called Strange Land, and so I was happy to return to it, and I'll read a few poems from it um, in closing. Thank you for staying to the bitter end. Um, I hope not to make it too bitter, um, but it will be a little bit bewildered. Uh, this book, Strange Land, comes out of a bewildering time. It was written um, during the the, the, the Gulf War, when uh, the, at the commencement of the Gulf War, um, it was published in 2010. And as I returned to it, knowing that I would read from it today, uh, it occurred to me that things are no less strange as we um, approach the election season, but also all of the time um, in the interim um, has continued to become and remain strange, maybe in just different ways. So thank you for the opportunity to, to return to some of these poems. The first book probably always needs a poem that addresses childhood, and this is it, to childhood. Moth-eaten faith, old flame, old shame, I have sworn you off again to furtively return Bourbon I stashed in the basement mattress where my uncle whoops it up with country whores. You are no good to me if I continue to abuse you. Why can't I let you die? You've done your chores. Your fishbowl full of formaldehyde, your toy box rupturing with foreign wars. No one believes you, childhood, let alone my poems. But at night, the lost limb itches. I follow you down my Florida of the mind, poor Ponce de Leon, after his beloved syphilitic guide. The singers. This is from a fresco. The singers. They are not angels, though they have the hollow look of beings bred on ether. There's an air of cool removal from your life, the hawk's indifference to the hare's terror. You see it in their palms raised casually against the fresco surface as to glass of submarine or spacecraft. And you see it in their eyes, oracular, that let you pass alone to unknown agony. The song they sing is merely time. Harry Farr, this was a soldier in the First World War, executed by firing squad, 1916, after refusing to return to the trenches. This is executed by his own troops. And as the intimate bullet enters the kerchief pinned and fluttering at my breast, white as a moth, ash innocent, I shall think of the stars that doomed me. Amniotic flecks, flint castings harrowing at dawn, the iron shell I cannot enter, cannot enter ever again. For hear me, I was born too far from beauty, and have always been away. 
a child who sought in soundless things, painted butterfly or spotted mole, the soul of beauty. They eluded me. Man was the destiny I fell to. Do not call it fear that I refused to put it on. Once I knocked, I heard the clicking shut of doors down corridors forever. Hell is like that. You can hear it in the dawn, in the dark, disconsolate, labyrinthine scream of shells my memory is almost to become. Hell is the echo of a quiet I dreamed that haunts me nightly, dogs me as a child will dog his mother's shadow. Now we speak of shades. I am becoming one with time. The rifles cocked, my brothers in a line, like ripening corn, all ears, all ears. I pity them. Would I were not the cause. I would not add to this eternity of noise. Atlantis. About that country, there's not that much to say. Blue sun far off, a watery vein in the cloud belt. The solid earth itself, unremarkable. Familiar ruins littered with standing stones our people had lost the ability to decipher. How deeply had we slept? Beneath the jellyfish umbles of evergreens, each one a dream and the effervescent stars, cold currents tugged at our thoughts like tapestries unraveling into war. All spring, the nightingale perched on the green volcano's lip. The rats had abandoned the temples. My mind was a voyage, hungering to happen. I hope this one doesn't come true again. After the president's speech, you dream of corpses. Those bodies that last night stormed the bosses in your brain, some picket line or strike, and were beaten down so brutally, batoned corpses piled the streets, men and women naked, massive, Blakean physiques. Where are they now? Anonymous, shoveled in the mass grave, your minds become at morning after dream. So you are the mirror of your times. A century rots, forgotten, storyless in you, sepulcher, articulate and ambulating tomb, packed charnel house, dead to the very eyes. Where will you be that morning when they rise? There's a famous picture that Carl Sagan wrote about called the pale blue dot of the planet Earth taken from the farthest at that point vantage, uh, which was about the range of Pluto. I have it in my classroom framed look at it occasionally with his eloquent words. Here's a poem called Voyager. We've packed our bags. We're set to fly no one knows where. The maps won't do. We are crossing the ocean's nihilistic blue with an unborn infant's opal eye. It has the clarity of earth and sky seen from a spacecraft once removed, as through an amniotic lens, that groovelessness of space, the last star by. 
We have set out to live and die into the interstices of a new nowhere to be or be returning to, a little like an infant's airborne cry. We've set our sights on nothing left to lose and made of loss itself a lullaby. Just two more short ones. For this one, you'll have to imagine the diamondback rattlesnake and uh, more specifically the vertebra of the diamondback rattlesnake after the skin is gone. And into that, you'll have to imagine a wedding ring. Covenant. This ring, made from the vertebra and rib of the diamondback, I found beneath the shed, coiled upon itself and ages dead. The rattle hung above the empty crib. Is all the remnant of its brilliant skins. Wear it in memory of our innocence. The last poem in the book um, is an imitation from a poem I love by Jorge Luis Borges. And I thought that it was a, a fitting Conclusion to a book called Strange Land, which is all really about um, expulsion and trying to find your coordinates and whereabouts, no whereabouts in uh, the territory that you happen to be walking around in. Um, as the fabled Adam and Eve were after their expulsion, um, it's called Adam Unparadised. And unparadised is a, I like that word a lot. I think Milton coined it in Paradise Lost. It's such a good adjective, unparadised, because it holds what it used to hold, right? Adam, unparadised. And thank you again for having me, and thank you, George, for that lovely introduction. The garden, was it real? Was it a dream? Long in the wandering light I have been asking, as if in consolation, if the past of this most miserable Adam weren't just the fabrication of some god I dreamed. Already imprecise in memory, my kingdom, that pellucid paradiso, but I know that it exists and will persist, if not for me. The unforgiving earth is my inheritance. The incestuous wars of Cain's and Abel's and their progeny. Still, it must mean something to have loved, to have been happy to have lighted on the living garden, if even for a day. <laughs>